Welcome back aboard U-80. It's 10 minutes to midnight on July 5, 1941. U-80 is heading 318 degrees at a speed of 13 knots. We're powering ahead at full, full ahead. Uh, we are 600 miles west of Ireland and 750 miles south of Iceland in the North Atlantic. And we are heading for the projected uh, position of a warship that was announced to us by our headquarters. Um, let's take a look at the message. So it is a um, actually a task force of enemy warships. They are currently in AL-36, um, heading west-southwest at a speed of 50 knots. So this is the great square that they are currently in, and this is the uh, projected uh, lane uh, in their current uh, heading. So within 24 hours they should be in this uh, grid square here. And uh, since we're going full speed we should be there in 20 hours should give us enough time to start a scanning pattern. We were having some engine problems earlier, but um, from what the engineer has said, we should be able to continue our mission. We are down to about 70% of fuel. Also, the other supplies are, of course, getting lower. We are now um, 20 days at sea, almost uh, three weeks. But um, hopefully, we can catch some nice targets here. So it's definitely worth it to continue the mission. July 6, tw 20 minutes past noon, uh, ship time. We are still heading 318 degrees. Uh, we are about 16 hours or 150 nautical miles from the starting point of our search pattern. And um, we're getting the crew ready for the uh, probably difficult hunt for a worthy target in this uh, enemy task force that we're trying to find. The weather has worsened a bit. We have 15 meters of wind, although we still have clear skies. So hopefully it stays that way. It'll greatly help us finding this task force. July 6, 6 o'clock in the evening, ship time. You're about 9 hours from the starting point of the search pattern, which I have started to lay out. It's basically a zigzag across the uh, projected um, grid square of the most likely position of our targets. The weather has calmed down. We are down to 6 meters of wind per second, but we do have uh, some fog. So I hope. This isn't an indication of uh, worsening conditions. Unfortunately, we haven't received any updates as to the target's position. So we have to go with our projection, which obviously incurs some uh, imprecision over time. So it is uh, going to be a bit of a search for a needle in a haystack. and. Uh, as far as we are aware, there are no friendly forces in the vicinity, so we might not get um, any more intelligence from Heck. It's 2.40 in the morning of July 7, and we are about to start the search pattern. We're 
going to turn on a course of 340 degrees and will speed up to 13 knots and um, run down the first leg of the search pattern. We still haven't received any updates and we also haven't received a weather report but from our own reporting right now the sea is very calm here. There's a bit of haze but it's not um, giving us too much trouble at this moment. And uh, we can take a quick look at the map. So, because of the nature of our target, the high speeds, it is necessary to, instead of searching inwards towards them, uh, in order to cover the, the area that we need to search, it is necessary for us to go with them, in a way. So we'll turn uh, more westwards, and then scan south, and then back west. Um, we will move over about uh, 30 kilometers per crossing, or move across the, um, the target's course. And this way we should uh, cover the potential search area in about Uh, 35 hours, if I remember correctly. Uh, of course it is possible that targets have changed course somewhere between where we got the initial, initial report and now when we're starting the search pattern. So, um... And I see the crew has already changed course, so we're going to up to the required 13 knots. So, um, it is possible that we will be searching here and not find anything. But, um, Let's hope for some luck. Uh, on another note, um, German divisions are advancing fast in the western Ukraine and large um, enemy forces are being encircled and destroyed. Uh, all three branches are conducting a very successful campaign in the east. Operation Barbarossa has begun. and. Um, from that perspective, things are looking good. I informed my crew accordingly to keep morale high. It's 7.30 in the morning of July 7, 1941. We're about five hours into our search pattern and we have reached the first or uh, the end of the first um, leg. Um, I did make a mistake uh, in my earlier calculations, so actually a whole leg across is um, at the speed uh, were too slow, so I had to extend the area that we cover in one crossing. So we're now moving backwards 40 uh, kilometers or about 20 nautical miles. Uh, this will leave some gaps, obviously, so it has become necessary to go for uh, hydrophone checks every so often. And I've decided that I'll uh, dive once at every turning point and once in the center of a uh, crossing. So um, I'm going to initiate the dive here, and if we don't hear anything, we'll turn southwards. Unfortunately, the hydrophone check didn't reveal anything, so we'll have to keep searching on the surface.
July 7, 11.40 in the morning. You're heading 194 degrees at a speed of 14 knots on the second crossing in our search pattern. And it's time for the next hydrophone check. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin. Tiefenruder auf normal tauchen. Auf Tauchstationen. Wind speed has increased and the haze isn't getting any less. So actually conditions are worsening. Also, given that our target is so fast, uh, 15 knots, which is just two knots below our top speed, um, we can't really... Thank you. Um, we can't expect to have a lot of time even if we acquire the target. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin. Ein Drittel fahrt voraus. Which is to say that if we catch them, we have to be very quick to maneuver in a, to a good uh, position. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin. Derzeitige Tiefe 3,1 Meter. And if we take a look at the map, we see that we have to cover very long uh, crossings and even at top speed they take us. Um, the hydrophone checks notwithstanding, they take us about 8 hours. And with this, uh, with how, how the situation is, this way we can't really expect to cover the search area. In addition to that, the latest uh, report about this task force is actually now almost two days old. So I think also considering the fuel and supply situation, we're down below 60% uh, remaining fuel. Um, it isn't sensible to continue the search past um, the end of this uh, crossing. So um, we'll finish this crossing and then uh, consider our options. It's 4 o'clock in the afternoon, the wind has picked up considerably. And we have reached the end of our second crossing and we're going down for the final hydrophone check. Uh, we also have quite a bit of ice. So hopefully we can pick something up um, on the hydrophone. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin, ein Drittel fahrt voraus. Derzeitige Tiefe 2 0. July 7, 5:30 in the afternoon ship time. UAT is heading straight north at a speed of 8 knots. We have abandoned the search for the enemy task force and we're now trying to get into position to intercept or find at least the uh, convoys heading east uh, on one of the main convoy routes in the North Atlantic. Uh, we're expected to arrive in the new position in about 12 hours. It's 11.30 on the evening of July 7, we're on our way uh, north and we have spotted a convoy. Um, we did get a message earlier, there, there is a neutral convoy in the vicinity and it seems um, we just ran into it. Now I have turned away or I'm ordering to turn away from the convoy because I did see some um, escorts and I don't want to get spotted. But we do want to Jawohl, Herr Kaloin. Ruder, null, grad. Uh, make sure that it is actually a neutral convoy so we'll, we're going to shadow it for a while until we uh, learn more about what exactly we're looking at. Uh, 
as the conditions are quite unfavorable right now for a surface approach. And probably turn um, way towards the west, away from the convoy, and then try to overtake the convoy uh, in the cover of darkness. doesn't seem to be a very big convoy and I can see two escorts right now it's 2.35 in the morning of July 8, 1941 UAT is heading 10 degrees at a speed of 13 knots we are roughly 15 kilometers or a bit less than 10 miles ahead of the convoy. Uh, the convoy is only very faintly visible. We see a freighter and uh, an escort. And then we also see what seems to be a warship of some type, a cruiser, possibly. It doesn't look like a traditional freighter and it's ahead of the uh, convoy actually. So the plan is for now to keep observing the convoy. We'd like to get on the other side of the convoy and to get more information on what's actually inside seems to be a, a mixed bag, so to say. Also, according to the radio report that we obtained from headquarters, it's a neutral convoy, so we might not find um, valid targets inside. But if this is a warship, chances are high it's a British warship, and we would have a target anyway. Okay, we just finished um, crossing the convoy's track. Um, we estimate them to be on a heading of 60 degrees with a speed of about 7 knots. And more precisely, we've just crossed the track of the, this uh, individual warship that's a bit um, further to the starboard. Of the convoy. Um, if we take a look at the map, the track is about 500 meters north of the convoy, or of the outermost column of the convoy. Actually, it's more a kilometer. Uh, the convoy, I estimate, to have about six columns. Pretty sure it's six columns. Have at least four ship uh, deep. So there are a lot of potential targets in the convoy, but um, I think we want to investigate this uh, warship more closely. So my plan is to slow down and dive and let the, uh, the warship uh, come closer so we can take a look through the periscope. Um, I don't dare getting much closer, uh, closer than about uh, 10,000 meters because there are a lot of escorts around. So we will dive now and go on a parallel course and slow down and let the warship catch up with us while keeping a close uh, look at it um, through the periscope and the hydrophone. Jawohl, Herr Kaloin, Tiefenruder auf Normaltauchen. 
We're now at a depth of 30 meters. We're heading 60 degrees, roughly. Correct. Do precisely 60 degrees. And we're on a parallel course, course thusly, and we have slowed down to four knots. Um, the convoy and the warship with the convoy should close up to us within, I'd say, less than an hour. They're closer and they're about, we're about when we do. When we dived, they were about 10 kilometers away. They covered 10 kilometers in about 45 minutes. Uh, we'll be keeping track, especially of the warship with the hydrophones. And uh, once they get closer, we'll go to periscope depth and require a visual contact. So, uh, sonar, um, the sonar man has picked up warship, moving fast, and the reason why we dived and didn't stay on the surface is that um, this time of the year and um, the latitude where we're at, uh, the sun will rise quite early and uh, it's just not safe at the s on the surface. Uh, in this weather too, um, it was very calm, less than three meters per second of wind, no fog and no precipitation. So I think for us um, right now it's safer under the surface. We're going to go for a first peek through the periscope. Uh, we have at least two or have at least two or three destroyers or corvettes uh, in front of the convoy or in this side anyway. But um, right now we are most interested in the large, probably warship that we saw. Let's um, try to get a look. There's nothing in the immediate vicinity. It's like to do an all around scan with the observation scope. So let's uh, zoom in. There's nothing visible where we get the hydrophone contact from. There is a convoy over there. And I think this is our target. Uh, 
I think over here, where we get the hydrophone contact, must be the, uh, the screen that's in front of the convoy. But uh, currently we can't see it. So it might have turned south again. There's nothing in the immediate vicinity though. Now 3.40 in the morning, we're still heading 60 degrees at a speed of 2 knots. And the convoy is closing up with us. And uh, we've made a very interesting observation. There is another ship that doesn't look like a typical freighter or tanker, which we've also uh, identified in the convoy. This looks like another warship inside inside the convoy. So we have this one, which just could be a large destroyer, but I doubt it somehow. And then we have this one inside the convoy. I would love to take a closer look at There's a screen in the south, but it's very far away. There's a screen uh, just in front of the convoy. So what I'm thinking of doing is... Um, let's see, this is the outermost column. This could be a battleship. Battleship or a battle cruiser. I think we should um, increase our distance again. Kind of hard to tell what we should do. Either increase our distance surface and reposition us more in the center of the convoy. And try to sneak into it to get a close look at this um, potential battle cruiser. Or we could try to do it while submerged. We check out the map, the track of the of the other warship in the center should be roughly here. kilometers away. Um, I'm going to try to get a more accurate distance estimate so I know where the convoy is, depending on uh, how close they are. I, I will either turn in, submerged, try to get closer to the warship's track in the middle, or we'll turn outwards surface and reposition ourselves further ahead uh, to slip then back into the convoy this way. <laughs> 